So we're considering an example of uh, a flow where the only mechanism of transport of vorticity is by diffusion. And that example is uh, an impulsively started plate. It's a horizontal plate that uh, at t equals zero starts moving in its own plane. And on top of that plate is an unbounded quiescent fluid. Well, the fluid is initially quiescent, but the plate starts moving and there is a no-slip boundary condition for fluid particles on the plate itself. So viscous effects uh, induce the motion in the fluid and that can be viewed as the diffusive transport of vorticity that's generated at the plate and it diffuses away from the surface. So we, uh, we're looking for solution of a diffusion equation u as a function of uh, y which is the direction normal to the plate and t which is time. Uh, it's uh, subject to an initial condition so there is no velocity at uh, t equals zero and two boundary conditions so velocity at the plate is equal to the velocity of the plate which is capital U and far away from the plate at y equals infinity the velocity is zero. We're looking at the solution of this equation uh, in terms of uh, a similarity, uh, we'll be using the similarity transformation to find the solution of this diffusion equation. And that means that we're looking for transformation of independent variables uh, y and t such that in those variables all the velocity profiles at different time instances collapse on a single curve. And we're trying the uh, uh, particular form of a similarity variable, we'll call it eta, which is y divided by 2 square root of nu t, where nu is the uh, kinematic viscosity. Uh, we find the expressions for the terms in the diffusion equation, substitute those expressions there, define the new dependent variable u as capital U times f, the new unknown, that f is a function of eta. So the new governing equation is second derivative of f with respect to eta plus 2 eta first derivative equals to zero. So what we've achieved by performing a similarity transformation is we transformed the partial differential equation with two independent variables into uh, an ordinary differential equation. And in this particular case, we didn't even increase the order of the equation. So it's, it's a good trade. We can find the solution of this uh, before actually, before we, we find the solution, we want to check if our similarity transformation was done correctly. Uh, the original diffusion equation had an initial condition and two boundary conditions. Now that we have only a uh, second order ordinary differential equation, we don't want three conditions. It could potentially overdefine our problem when we integrate this. So if we transform the initial and boundary conditions, we want two of them to represent the same thing. Uh, physically. And that is the case. We find that the uh, initial condition uh, u at y0 uh, equals to 0 transforms to f uh, of infinity equals to 0. And the same expression uh, is given by the boundary condition y uh, u at infinity t equals 0. So you can check uh, that those are the same by using the definitions of the new, uh, new similarity variable eta. And the second uh, condition that we have is that u, uh, u at y t equals capital U gives us f of 0 equals 1. With that we can solve the new governing equation. We integrate this twice and obtain the solution that's in the form of the error function. So it's a special function, it's um, the uh, error function of eta is the uh, 2 over square root of pi times integral from 0 to eta of e to the minus xi squared dxi. 
uh, Xi is just a dummy variable over which we integrate. So the solution is uh, a function of eta, which is the uh, upper limit of integration. Um, boundary conditions for the error function are uh, function at zero is zero and uh, the function at infinity is one. We use that to find constants of integration. So our solution of the uh, ordinary differential equation the transform diffusion equation is f of eta is equals 1 minus error function of eta. Or we could write it in, as u over capital U is 1 minus error function of y over 2 square root of mu t, where mu is kinematic viscosity. Knowing that solution, we can uh, find all sorts of useful parameters, for example, the uh, vorticity uh, in in the flow field and because we're considering the 2D flow the only relevant component of vorticity is the out of plane z direction vorticity. We could find also shear stress at any point in the flow including that on the wall on the plate itself and if we integrate that over the area of the plate later on we can find the, the drag. But the interesting thing is the extent of the viscous effects. Uh, that's induced by that motion. So we could, uh, from the solution, uh, from this analytical solution of U over capital U, uh, we know that U over capital U is equal to 0 0.01 at eta equals 2. What it tells us is that the velocity of the fluid is 1% of the velocity of the moving plate. Uh, at the combination of y and t that gives eta equals to 2. Looking at it a little bit more closely, we can say that this tells us that at time equals t, the effect of the wall motion is confined, well 99% of it is confined to a distance of the order of square root of mu t. It's interesting that the diffusion the rate of the diffusion slows down with time so it's a square root so the the rate of change uh, becomes smaller and smaller as the time progresses uh, also an interesting observation that this diffusion uh, rate is a function of viscosity which is intuitive the more viscous the fluid the faster the effects of the wall motion would propagate through it but it's not the function of the velocity of the wall itself. So if you move the wall faster, the uh, diffusion is not going to happen any faster. So that, that's the power of analytical approach. Uh, it's very difficult to arrive to this conclusion uh, without having the analytical form of the solution in front of us. And relatively speaking, the diffusion is slow. It's uh, the, uh, if we, uh, if we conduct an experiment in air corresponding to this problem setup, we will find that the uh, vorticity or the, will diffuse away from a moving wall the distance of about 11 centimeters in one minute, which is which is relatively slow. So that's um, there is a lot of uh, physical insight that can be obtained from a simple analytical solution uh, of. Uh, a very simplistic equation that has only one mechanism of transport of vorticity in the flow. And uh, this is where we start uh, when we start our exploration of vorticity transport.